This right now is just getting finalized. It's a 900 kilowatt hash hut. This will be going to West Texas. And I'll talk about a few of the reasons why I designed it this way. And then also, you know, what the issues in the industry generally are. Uh, we do, we've for years now, since like 2019, 2020, our hash huts uh, have been out in the field. And it was after several years before that, doing you know like one-way air cooling where i switched our design instead of it going one way through the building it actually goes in the building low comes up in the building and exits above the intake now what's not attached right now are these deflectors that will get assembled and put on the outside the reason for that is because if you're in a cold environment if you do not put heat recirc upstream like upstream of your first filter, then then this filter will cake off with hoarfrost, with snow, with ice, no matter how it's arranged. It doesn't matter if it's vertical, horizontal, with air coming up into it, uh, blowing snow, and the suction of the of the Bitcoin container will cause uh, you know that to the 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 ice to build up and eventually to plug off, and that's if it's if it's doing its job, if it's not doing its job and you have suction like cave the filters in, you'll have a big disaster. But uh, the idea is that by putting the heat above the intake, when these attachments are on, you can open up a little slider and it will dump heat back down to the intake. And it basically preheats the air so that you don't have like negative 40 degrees C air coming into the building. You can actually preheat it to like 30 degrees C, even in negative 40 weather, if you dump enough heat down there. And the main thing is it keeps the filters and everything around the building melted. It doesn't allow any snow to build up because the number one goal for me when in my team, when we're designing our products is for them to be applicable basically anywhere. Like it, they should be able to go to West Texas in an in, in ultra high temperature. They should be able to go to Northern Canada and deal with these brutal, you know, prairie winters that we have. So the other thing about our, and, and this is sort of the key to why our products cool so well. We have a pre-filter. This just cuts down on the bugs, the fluff, the shit that you just don't want to get, you know, obviously into your miners. So like the, the really nasty stuff. But on the inside, which we're going now, we have uh, two options on primary filters. So here's like one of the discharge sides of the fan. There, you can either put in another blue filter on the back of this screen, just to, if you don't care too much about uh, dust and stuff. But if you do care about dust, we have these pocket filters. These cut down huge on anything but just the finest dust. Uh, in fact, anything that you'd need for a Bitcoin mining, you know, air quality control, uh, these are going to handle. The other thing is the fans. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that that well, but the fan, I'll open up the screen here. The fan, it's a direct drive motor and it's on the cold side of the building. It's not on the discharge of the miners. That's one change we made a few years ago was we we did have heating problems with some of our old buildings and it was because the fan a it was a little undersized but b it was on it was up on the discharge side the hot side of the miners and the problem that you see with i'd say most of our competition even today is their fans are on the hot side because these motors like it's not easy to find a high temp rated motor and, and they're very expensive and uh, it's arguable how well they work anyway. So you don't get temperature overloads, thermal overloads on our systems because we put them here. Again, we're trying to build something that you never have to be on site. That's the whole point. That's probably the hardest part of air cooling is, uh, is keeping things reliable. That's why we, we really like the water cooling technology that's coming out. But as far as air is concerned, air is always gonna be the lowest cost cooling method we want to design something that's going to work in every environment. One product, you might buy it for West Texas. Ten years later, you might ship it up to Canada. Like, it's got to work. If, it, if you have a container that only works in one environment, it doesn't work somewhere else, it's not a great product. 
Um, and that's the problem with a lot of these one-way airflow containers. They don't have heat recirc. They have no means of doing heat recirc outside of just, you know, uh, something complex or silly. So we do it in a way that it's all passive. There's no uh, mechanical, you know, like blower fans. There's no like uh, uh, electrified resistors, like heating a blanket or something. Um, that's why inherently the designs this way. The other thing though, is that these fans are hugely oversized for the, for the each rack that they serve. Now the fans do come in, push air in, and it rises up and it exits both sides of the building. Uh, that opposed fans does have a slight D rate on the airflow, but it's very negligible and it's overcome by oversizing the fans anyway. The fans are also oversized to be able to push past, you know, tighter filtration. And we've had this exact unit running over a year now, even in West Texas. And it's everything I've heard from the client and all these ones are going down there as well. It's outperforming uh, any other air-cooled pod that I've seen on the market, especially the big names you see. I won't name them. I'm not here to bash bash anybody, but our our systems are designed to outperform and be ultra reliable. And that would be mostly it. Um, you know, we don't use belts on our fans. We don't want you to have to go in to swap belts out, even if it's cheap. We just don't want you. We don't want that to be an issue. And the fans themselves, uh, they're all VFD controlled at the back here. And, and actually, probably the coolest feature about this product is it doubles as passive cooling. Like these are, we call them boost fans. They're supply fans. When they're off, you can see right through, there's no louvers in there. When these are off, this building still functions perfectly uh, in weather that allows passive cooling, which is like winter. So if you're in Wyoming or something, and you get a hot summer day and you have active boost on, which I'll turn on here at the end of the video. But when that boost goes on, you'll you'll build a cool in the hottest of weather. Uh, but then when it when the weather turns, maybe it's a it's a freak thing. It's going to turn very quickly. Um, maybe so quickly you can't even get to site. Well, you can just remotely if it's not doing it automatically because there's an auto you know temperature sensor that'll slow the fans down. But if you if uh, if you have to log in, do it uh, remotely, you can turn the fans off completely. I mean, if you're in Canada, like up in Slave Lake, where a bunch of our customers are, like mining Bitcoin on oil wells, uh, you don't need fans on in the winter at all. Uh, you can let you can let the miners push their own air out the building because these motorized louvers always stay open when the building's energized, and the fan can be turned off completely, and the miners will pull their own air out the building. In a properly designed hot cold aisle, that's gonna work perfect, especially in cold weather. In really hot weather, you know, ant miners aren't gonna be good at, at doing passive cooling, they just suck in high temp. Uh, but Watts miners do really well. Uh, so you can actually even use, uh, if it's not too hot out, you can use the passive cooling even in hot weather and not take that extra power load that you're paying for on the, on the exhaust fans. So that's a bit it, about it. Um, I would, I honestly, you could put this building against any anyone else in the industry if it doesn't outperform them on cooling in literally every aspect from filtration to like functionality. Uh, I'll just give you your money back because uh, I know that's not gonna happen anyway. Wink, 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 uh, fingers crossed. Anyway, I'm gonna just fire these fans up. Uh, I'll start at 50% and then I'll just go up to 100. It might not give you a great idea since this is digital, but the, the, the amount of airflow in here is absolutely bonkers. So we'll do that. It's hard to convey how insane it is. Uh, yeah, uh, these can go anywhere. Buy one right now. <laughs>